Hi guys, this is Shinalin Alarosa from BSCE 3A and today I'm going to discuss about the two subtopics namely evaporation process and evaporimeters from the chapter 3 abstraction from precipitation. These are the subtopics for chapter 3 introduction, evaporation process, evaporimeters, empirical evaporation equations, analytical methods of evaporation estimation, reservoir evaporation and methods for its reduction, transpiration, evapotranspiration, measurement of evapotranspiration, evapotranspiration equations, potential evapotranspiration over India, actual evapotranspiration, interception, depression storage, infiltration, infiltration capacity, measurement of infiltration, modeling infiltration capacity, and lastly, classification of infiltration capacities. Based on the last reporters, we learned about the topic precipitation, in which the term precipitation denotes all forms of water that reach the earth from the atmosphere. In this chapter, we will be discussing the chief components of abstraction from precipitation, which are necessary in the analysis of various hydrologic situations. Various aspects of evaporation from water bodies and evapotranspiration from a basin will be discussed in detail in subtopics evaporation process up to potential evapotranspiration over India, interception and depression storages which act as losses in the production of runoff will be discussed in the subtopics actual evapotranspiration to interception. Lastly, infiltration process which is a major abstraction from precipitation and an important process in groundwater recharge and in increasing soil moisture storage will be discussed in detail in subtopics depression storage up to classification infiltration capacities. In this report, I will only discuss evaporation process and evaporimeters, so just a short introduction. In engineering hydrology, runoff due to a storm event is often the major subject of study. All obstructions from pre precipitation vis those due to evaporation, transpiration, infiltration, surface detention, and storage are considered as losses in the production of runoff. Evaporation from water bodies and soil masses together with transpiration from vegetation is termed as evapotranspiration. Let's start with evaporation process. Evaporation is the process in which a liquid changes to gaseous state at the freeze surface, below the boiling point through the transfer of heat energy. Evaporation also is a cooling process in that the latent heat of vaporization at about 585 calorie per gram of evaporated water must be provided by the water body. Examples, bodies of water and boiling water. Let's all watch this short video clip to understand further the evaporation process. Evaporation. In this video, we are going to learn about evaporation. Evaporation is the process by which water gets converted from liquid form to a vapor form. Evaporation from the oceans accounts for 80% of the water delivered as precipitation with balance occurring on land and land waters and plant surfaces. Let us do a small activity. Place a beaker containing water on a stove. Let the water boil. If you continue to heat the water, it turns into steam and evaporates. Add some spoons of salt to water another beaker and stir it well. The salt gets dissolved. Now heat the salt solution. The water gets evaporated, leaving the salt behind. Sea water contains salt mixed in it. Common salt is one amongst them. When seawater is allowed to stand in shallow pits, water gets heated by sunlight and slowly turns into water vapor through evaporation. In a few days, leaving the salts behind, water evaporates completely. Common salt is then obtained from this mixture of salts by further purification. Mm. 
in these examples, the molecules of water are in constant motion with a wide range of instantaneous velocities. An addition of heat causes this range and average speed to increase. When some molecules possess sufficient kinetic energy, they may cross over the water surface. The net escape of water molecules from the liquid state to the gaseous state constitutes evaporation. For the rate of evaporation, it is dependent on letter A, vapor pressures at the water surface and air above, letter B, air and water temperatures, letter C, wind speed, letter D, atmospheric pressure, letter E, quality of water, and for letter F, size of the water body. To explain further, letter A, vapor pressure. Dalton's law of evaporation after John Dalton, 1802, who first recognized this law. The rate of evaporation is proportional to the difference between the saturation vapor pressure at the water temperature and the actual vapor pressure in the air. El is equal to C times the quantity Ew minus Ea, where Ew is equal to rate of evaporation millimeter per day, C, a constant, Ew is equal to saturation vapor pressure at the water temperature, millimeter of mercury, Ea is equal to actual vapor pressure in the air, millimeter of mercury. Evaporation continues till saturation vapor pressure at the water temperature is equal to actual vapor pressure in the air. If Saturation vapor pressure at the water temperature is greater than actual vapor pressure in the air, condensation takes place. For letter B, temperature. The rate of evaporation increases with an increase in the water temperature. Regarding air temperature, a high correlation between evaporation rate and air temperature does not exist. For the same mean monthly temperature, it is possible to have evaporation to different degrees in lake in different months. And for letter C, wind. Wind aids in removing the evaporated water vapor from the zone of evaporation and consequently creates greater scope for evaporation. Sa tulong ng hangin, inaalis nito ang mga water vapor molecules at nagbibigay ng maaliwalas na hangin kung saan mas kaya nitong mag-hold pa ng mas maraming water vapors. Pero kapag ang wind velocity ay sapat na at kaya nang alisin lahat ng na-evaporate na water vapor, then hindi na maapektuhan ng pagtaas pa ng wind velocity ang evaporation. And the rate of evaporation increases with the wind speed up to a critical speed beyond which any further increase in the wind speed has no influence on the evaporation rate. This critical wind speed value is function of the size of the water surface. For large water bodies, high-speed turbulent winds are needed to cause maximum rate of evaporation. For letter D, atmospheric pressure. A decrease in the barometer pressure, as in high altitudes, increases evaporation. At higher altitudes, evaporation loss is more and in deep valleys, it is less. For letter E, soluble salts. When a solute is dissolved in water, the vapor pressure of the solution is less than that of pure water and hence causes reduction in the rate of evaporation. For example, under identical conditions, evaporation from seawater is about 2 to 3 percent less than that from fresh water. Bumababa ang rate ng evaporation kapag may tumataas sa impurities katulad ng soluble salt. The percent reduction in evaporation approximately corresponds to the percentage increase in specific gravity. And lastly, for letter F, heat storage in water bodies. Deep water bodies have more heat storage than shallow ones. Sa mga deep lakes, kapag tag-init ang panahon, nakakaipon ito ng radiation energy at nare-release ito kapag dumating na ang taglamig. Kaya, less evaporation kapag summer at more evaporation naman ang nangyayari kapag winter kumpara sa mga shallow lakes. However, the effect of heat storage is essentially to change the seasonal evaporation rates and the annual evaporation rate is seldom affected. For my last subtopic, let's talk about evaporimeters. 
the amount of water evaporated from a water surface is estimated by the following methods. There are three methods using evaporometer data, empirical evaporation equations, and analytical methods. So for evaporometers, these are water-containing pans which are exposed to the atmosphere and loss of water by evaporation measured in them at regular intervals. Meteorological data such as humidity, wind movement, air and water temperatures and precipitation are also noted along with evaporation measurement. So ang evaporometers ay ginagamit para ma-estimate ang evaporation sa isang lugar at mas kinakailang ito sa mga lugar o bansa na kulang sa supply ng kanilang water resources. So there are four types of evaporometers. For the first type of evaporometers, Class A Evaporation Pan. It is a standard pan with 1,210 mm diameter and 255 mm depth. It is used by the U.S. Weather Bureau and Class A Evaporation Pan is also known as Class A Land Pan. The depth of water is maintained between 18 cm and 20 cm as seen in the figure. The pan is normally made of unpainted galvanized iron sheet. Monal metal is used where corrosion is a problem. The pan is placed on a wooden platform of 15 cm height above the ground to allow free circulation of air below the pan. And to measure the evaporation, Class A evaporation pan are made by measuring the depth of water with a hook bulge in a stealing well. For the second type, ISI Standard Pan, it is also known as Modified Class A Pan. It has a diameter of 1,220mm and has a depth of 255mm. It is made of copper sheet of 0.9mm thickness, tint inside, and painted white outside. A fixed point gauge indicates the level of water. The calibrated cylindrical measure, it is used to add or remove water maintaining the water level in the pan to a fixed mark. The top of the pan, which is covered with hexagonal wire netting of galvanized iron, it is used to protect the water in the pan from birds. The wire mesh, it reduces the evaporation by about 14% compared to unscreened pans. It is placed over a square wooden platform of 1,225mm width and 100 mm height to enable circulation of air underneath the pan. Additionally, wire mesh also makes the water more uniform during day and night. The third type is the Colorado Sunken Pan. This pan is 920 mm square and 460 mm deep. It is also made up of unpainted galvanized iron sheet and buried into the ground within 100 mm of the top. The chief advantage of the sunken pan is that radiation and aerodynamics characteristics are similar to those of a lake. However, it has the following disadvantages. Number one is difficult to detect leaks. Number two, extra care is needed to keep the surrounding area free from tall grass, dust, and etc. And for the last one, it is expensive to install. For the last type of evaporometers is the U.S. Geological Survey Floating Pan. With a view to simulate the characteristics of a large body of water, this square pan 900 mm side and 450 mm depth, supported by drum floats in the middle of a raft 4.25 m by 4.87 m, is set afloat in a lake. The water level in the pan is kept at the same level as the lake leaving a rim of 75 mm. It has a diagonal baffles provided in the pan reduce the surging in the pan due to wave action. And the U.S. Geological Survey floating pan has these advantages. It is its high cost of installation and maintenance together with the difficulty involved in performing measurements. These four types of evaporometers are installed in the field and the pans is filled with a known quantity of water 
then the water is allowed to evaporate during a certain period of time. It is usually 24 hours. Every 24 hours, the remaining quantity of water is measured. If there is a rainfall, it is measured sim simultaneously. And to know the difference between the two measured depths, they use several equations and formulas. So now, let's talk about pan coefficient. The ratio of the amount of evaporation from a large body of water to that measured in an evaporation pan. Pan coefficient. Evaporation pans are not exact models of large reservoirs and have the following principal drawbacks. There are three following principal drawbacks. Number one, they differ in the heat storing capacity and heat transfer from the sides and the bottom. The sunken pan and floating pan aim to reduce this deficiency. As a result of this factor, the evaporation from a pan depends to a certain extent on its size. While a pan of 3 meter diameter is known to give a value which is about the same as from a neighboring large lake, a pan of size 1 meter diameter indicates about 20% excess evaporation than that of the 3 meter diameter pan. And for the number 2, the height of the rim in an evaporation pan affects the wind action over the surface. Also, it casts a shadow of variable magnitude over the water surface. And lastly, for number 3, the heat transfer characteristics of the pan material is different from that of the reservoir. And the evaporation observed from a pan has to be corrected to get the evaporation from lake under similar climatic and exposure conditions. A coefficient is introduced as lake evaporation is equal to pan coefficient times pan evaporation, where Cp is equal to pan coefficient. There are values of pan coefficient. For number one, the type, type of pan, class A land pan, and it has a average value of 0.70 and has a range of 0.60 to 0.80 and for the number 2 ISI pan or modified class A it has an average value of 0.80 and has a range of 0.65 to 1.10 for the number 3 Colorado sunken pan it has an average value of 0.78 and has a range of 0.75 to 0.86 for the number 4 USGS floating pan, it has an average value of 0.80 and has a range of 0.70 to 0.82. Next is for the evaporation stations. It is usual to install evaporation pans in such locations where other meteorological data are also simultaneously collected. The WMO recommends the minimum network of evaporometer stations as below. Number 1, Arid Zones. One station for every 30,000 km squared. Number two, humid temperate climates. One station for every 50,000 km squared. And for number three, cold regions. One station for every 100,000 km squared. And also, currently about 220 pan evaporimeter stations are being maintained by India Meteorological Department. And for typical hydrometeorological station, it contains the following Ordinary rain gauge, recording rain gauge, Stevenson box with maximum and minimum thermometer and dry and wet bulb thermometers, wind anemometer, wind direction indicator, sunshine recorder, thermohydrograph, and pan evaporimeter. That's all. Thank you.